let's just kind of start with the banking mess because the fate of First Republic hangs in the balance. Um, when you hear these reports and know that, that in the case of Signature, the FDIC says, well, we had job openings we couldn't fill, basically. Uh, the Fed, when it comes to SVB, says, well, there were people in place, but they just needed to be empowered to do something more about it. And the result of this is probably going to be more regulation for some probably well-managed banks who think, you know, what did we do to deserve this? But did the Fed say that the real cause of all this was higher interest rates? <laughs> um, the Fed kept interest rates so low for so long that a lot of these banks were basically reaching for yield. They were buying long-term treasuries. They were lending um, money for mortgages at very, very low rates just to earn some money. And then the Fed started raising rates. And they started raising rates very aggressively. In my opinion, they've already gone too high. Yeah. But um, I think this is what really caused the banking crisis. Now we, you have people pulling money out of the regional banks to go into the big banks. I'm afraid that one day we're going to end up with only a handful of right. big banks in this country. And on top of that, people are pulling money out just to go into Treasury securities. Yourself being one of your yes. part of the problem here, right? We, we all have we talked about T-bill and chill. That was the joke for a few months until it basically took down the banking system, right? And the irony is it's high-yielding U.S. government securities that are causing this deposit hole and a funding problem for a lot of these banks. Yeah, the, the, the Fed has caused the crisis by raising interest rates. But on the other hand, they've given us a great place to park money in very safe securities for some period of time and earn a great rate of return. So, uh, you know, I, I would like to see the Fed take a little bit more responsibility for causing the banking crisis. I just wanted to give Steve a, a final word on this, Vahan, before, uh, Steve, we let you go. I mean, and we are going to hear from Fed Chair Powell himself next week. This will be the first meeting that they've actually had time to digest the failures that were kind of happening in real time at the last meeting. Yeah, I mean, uh, Vahan, I, I guess you could, you could have it both ways. I mean, in the sense that, yeah, the Fed uh, kept rates low and then it hiked really quickly. But, you know, what's the banking, uh, what are the senior executives at the bank bringing home all that money for? Because yeah. they're supposed to be able to sit there and collect a paycheck and take no responsibility. The world changes. The world changes every day. Banks are, are, is not a guaranteed business. It's not supposed to be, uh, you know, a government business where you guarantee you get your money back. So, I mean, I, I, I don't see letting the Fed off the hook on this. I think they should have done not... I don't think they should have not raised interest rates. I think they should have done a better job of the monetary policy part of the uh, Fed communicating with the supervisory part of the Fed saying, hey, we're hiking rates. You guys better double down on checking on interest rate risk. But I don't think you should let the banks off the hook. I think the Fed report is right in the sense that they're the ones at fault. They take home big paychecks. The boards of directors have a responsibility. They get paid. They probably get shares. They shouldn't be left the hook either. And behind, yeah, I yeah, thought you no, were going to cut. You're a value investor, right? I thought you were going to come out here and say <laughs> this is the whole point of why we look at management teams and differentiate between, you know, we don't just buy sectors and that kind of thing. So, yeah, please respond. No, I was going to say to Steve that I, I pretty much agree with what you're saying. I, I would not let the uh, bank managements off the hook. They do bear responsibility here, too. But uh, when, when you have a Fed that keeps interest rates at zero for so long and you're running a bank and you have to, you have to earn some money, you're, you're tempted very strongly, you're encouraged to go further out on that yield curve. And then you get caught in a situation like this. So, um, yes, the banks bear some responsibility, but I personally would put a bigger blame on the Fed. And, Vahan, let me just kind of pivot you and put this in context, where when I say that you're buying T-bills, I mean, you literally think that's a better uh, option Right, as a as a money manager right now, then a lot of stocks are. Well, I have a big allocation to stocks. Sure. I mean, T bills are a relatively small portion of of our portfolios, but when it comes to new money, I am adding to to T bills. Um, you know, I am also adding a little bit now to uh, to small cap stocks through ETFs because they've really lagged, and uh, I think that's a good opportunity right now. If you if you just compare the QQQ, for example, to the IWM. I mean, it's a huge difference year to date. And most people look at that and say, well, more of a reason to get out of the market. But you're saying maybe actually it's time to sniff right now. Banks and energy, obviously, are a lot of the reasons why the Russell underperforms it lately. But I don't know if you feel comfortable with that exposure. Well, I don't feel comfortable with banks. I, I do have a very small exposure to, to banks. Um, as far as energy goes, that was a very large position for me, um, which I added a couple of years ago, primarily through the XLE. Um, more recently, I've been decreasing that allocation. Steve? Yeah, I want to ask Fahan a question because it, it seems like, you know, people come in and they say, well, I'm buying these six months, I'm buying these one-year T-bills. I've heard a case made for the 10-year as follows, which yeah. is that if you believe the Fed is eventually going to get it right and that inflation over the 10-year period is going to average 
that there's a pretty nice real return in that tenure if you decide to go out and take that gamble. Where do you, where do you stand on that, Don? Yeah, I've heard that argument. Um, I'm not buying it because uh, if you're asking me uh, <laughs> what I'm going to do for the next 10 years, I'd rather be in stocks than to be in, uh, in treasuries. Um, I'm using treasuries right now more like a bank account. Uh, I think the one month to three right. month is a great place to park your money. Um, it's like having money in a savings account that you can take out at almost any time.